We have a very good public service. Sometimes people argue that Singapore civil servants are so good that we don't need ministers who are so competent or experienced. The civil servants know what to do. They will make proposals, they will put up papers. You just have to say yes or no. And Singapore will continue running smoothly. It's a crazy argument. The civil service didn't create itself out of thin air. We have a good civil service precisely because we've had a good political leadership who have built up a world-class civil service. Recruitment, management, policies, training, scholarships, building a team, imbibing, imbuing them with the ethos to serve, shaping an instrument which serves Singapore well. In, when you don't notice them, that means they are doing a good job. In a crisis, you notice that it's because of them and the government that we are able to come through. So, the civil servants are excellent, but they can only deliver good results because they are led by competent ministers who understand the issues, who make good decisions, who command their respect. Because only then can ministers guide and complement the civil servants in their work and deliver on their political promises. If the minister is not on top of his job, if the perm sex and the DSs and the directors and the junior officers know that this is a minister who depends on the draft he's given to read his speech, the minister is finished and Singapore is in big trouble. It's like an orchestra. It may have the best musicians in the world, but without a good conductor, it cannot produce great music. In fact, if the players are not impressed with their conductor, they may leave the orchestra to perform under some other maestro's baton, and you will be left with a mediocre orchestra. And even if you change the conductor then, it's too late. We saw this vividly in the pandemic. The ministries and agencies performed magnificently. All the people whom we've given COVID medals to fully deserve their awards. But without the ministers to make the big and risky decisions, to take political responsibility for them, to provide national leadership, we couldn't have come through as we did. All the big decisions, whether closing our borders to foreign arrivals, imposing the circuit breaker, pre-ordering COVID vaccines, spending more than a billion dollars, sign first, see product later. Draw on reserves to save jobs and save the economy. All these were political decisions. They were initiated and taken either by the MTF, the multi-ministry task force which Lawrence chaired, or by the cabinet. The ministers had to make these decisions. They had to push for these decisions. They had to decide and sell these decisions and carry them and make them work. And it has to be so. If you don't have a good first team, you are in very deep trouble. After COVID, to us, is a bad dream. To other countries, it's a continuing recurring nightmare because it went so badly, it went so bitterly. Now they are having post-mortems, analysis, replays of what went wrong, explaining all the things which went down the tubes when people didn't know their jobs and people didn't do their duties. It didn't happen in Singapore. And for that, I shall always be grateful. So remember, if you have ordinary political leaders, you are going to have an ordinary political public service, and this is going to become a very ordinary country. For other countries, it's fine. There are 200 countries in the world. You are one of them. 
somewhere there, you will be somewhere there. But if one day this little red dot no longer shines bright and is exceptional, if it cannot stand out compared to other countries in the world, you are nowhere. You are sunk. <laughs>